hello friends in continuation with the last lecture uh, uh, today we are going to talk about the next topic that is quantum theory of the paramagnetism so what is meant by the paramagnetism this is uh, thing about the uh, actually the occurrence of the magnetic uh, moment uh, for a shorter period of means the material possesses the magnetic permanent magnetic moment but they are randomly moment, uh, aligned so the total uh, magnetic moment uh, or the resultant magnetic moment is uh, zero at the uh, uh, time of the, maybe at the uh, thermal equilibrium we can say right and uh, if we just apply the uh, magnetic uh, field uh, to uh, the material obviously they will uh, try to align them along the uh, different uh, along, along the uh, field direction this is something like okay, uh, and these are the magnetic moments and they are uh, randomly aligned uh, when uh, there is no application of the magnetic moment so the resultant magnetic moment uh, is uh, zero but when we apply the uh, magnetic field okay in the in this case this is b is equal to zero if b is greater than zero then obviously this is always uh, or resultant becomes uh, uh, greater than zero so this is nothing but the uh, occurrence of the uh, paramagnetism in a material right so we'll try to see the how this paramagnetism uh, or the theory behind the uh, paramagnetism here so this uh, actually the chi in this case is a positive one so the atoms molecules and uh, defects possessing an odd number of the electrons uh, gives us the total spin of the electron uh, system and that cannot be zero so such uh, materials will give us the uh, uh, paramagnetic uh, behavior generally alkali halides alkali halides uh, uh, will uh, the uh, example of this uh, paramagnetic material also also there are uh, free atoms and ions with the uh, partly filled uh, inertias that is transition elements uh, ions are uh, uh, isoelectric with uh, transition elements uh, rare earth and uh, actinides elements uh, these are the examples uh, of the paramagnetism they, they possesses the uh, paramagnetism ex exhibited by the many of these ions even when the incorporated into the solids but not invariably uh, few compounds with uh, even number of the electrons including the molecules molecular uh, oxygen and the organic uh, bi radicals also uh, possesses the paramagnetism uh, uh, and uh, uh, the metals is uh, uh, also the possesses the paramagnetism here so let us try to understand that the quantum behavior of this uh, paramagnetism so the magnetic moment of an atom or the ion in a free space is given given by mu bar is equal to uh, gamma times h cross uh, j bar or else the gamma can be gamma h cross can be replaced with the minus g mu b uh, j bar here Mm, we can have this uh, j is nothing but the total angular momentum uh, which is given by h cross j h cross is uh, nothing but the uh, uh, reduced uh, planck's constant and uh, j, j bar is nothing but the summation of the orbital angular momentum plus uh, spin angular uh, momentum momentum and it is also called uh, okay so this is total angular momentum the constant here it is uh, gamma is nothing but the uh, ratio of the magnetic moment to the angular momentum uh, and that is uh, also uh, or gamma is called as the gyromagnetic ratio okay. so or, or else it is also called as the magneto gyric ratio so for the uh, electronic system it is called as the g factor or the spectroscopic splitting factor you must have uh, learned this uh, gyromagnetic uh, uh, or the spectroscopic splitting factor uh, in your atoms and molecules similarly this g mu b uh, is defined as the minus gamma uh, h cross okay so it is a uh, spectroscopic splitting uh, factor now uh, our land g factor is also g is also so the for the uh, electron spin g is uh, its numerical value is 2.0023 is approximately considered as a 2 uh, for the uh, electronic spin uh, for a free atom the g factor is given by the landes equation and that equation is nothing but the g is equal to 1 plus j into j plus 1 plus s into s plus 1 minus l into l plus 1 divided by 2 j into j plus 1 so this is the landage factor or the landage equation for the 
uh, splitting factor. So, the Bohr magnetron mu b uh, uh, is represented with the mu b and it is defined as the E h cross by 2 m in the uh, SI unit system. Okay. The energy levels of the system in the magnetic field. So, when we apply the magnetic field, how much is the energy uh, the system possesses is given by u is equal to minus mu bar dot b bar means uh, total magnetic moment or the resultant magnetic moment into um, the applied magnetic field intensity or magnetic field that is b bar. Okay. So, this is composed of the both internal magnetic field as well as the uh, externally applied magnetic field. So, the my, uh, u is equal to minus mu bar dot b bar. So, is equal to minus m j g mu b into b in the scalar form it is written. Here m j is the azimuthal quantum number and its value is uh, varying from the minus j to the plus j. So, minus j plus 1 to 0 and then the it goes to the uh, j as well or else the minus j to the plus j it, it will be having the 2 j plus 1 values for this azimuthal quantum number. For, uh, for a single spin with uh, no orbital moment. Uh, we have m j is have m j is having the uh, no orbital momentum means uh, it to it has just the uh, spin momentum. So, l becomes a 0 here. So, m j becomes a uh, plus minus half and g becomes a 2. Uh, therefore, or hence we can write down it is uh, total energy uh, of the system is e v is equal to uh, plus or minus mu bar dot uh, b bar or mu b ok mu b not the mu bar dot b mu b is a so, uh, if we just consider uh, the energy level splitting for uh, one electron in a magnetic field, if suppose b is equal to 0, so this is uh, the uh, energy state, but if b is uh, non-zero, okay, is non-zero is applied, then obviously the energy levels are getting uh, splitted over. So, the four electron magnetic moment mu is opposite uh, in the sign to the spin s. So, the uh, spin s, if suppose this is s, so the magnetic moment will be uh, in this direction. So, both are in the opposite uh, directions. So, uh, the uh, mu e is equal to, so we can have the mu e is equal to uh, what we can say g into mu b into s in this particular uh, case. So, in a lower energy state, so in a lower energy uh, state the magnetic moment is parallel to the applied magnetic field. This is the case where the parallel, they are the parallel one. In this case, there will be the anti parallel one. So, that we can have the higher energy of that uh, system. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, let us see uh, if the system has, if the uh, system has only a, a two levels, uh, the equilibrium populations are means suppose the uh, system is having the two levels and obviously it is equilibrium uh, level, uh, levels with the equilibrium populations, population of this state is considered as n 1 and this state will be having the n 2 population and total will be the n 1 plus n 2. So, the uh, so with uh, the 2 is defined as a k b t uh, is a temperature parameter. So, n 1 by n is uh, equilibrium population of the maybe lower state and this is equal to uh, and lower state energy we know that is mu b by k uh, tau or the k b t you can say divided by the uh, its uh, total uh, that is uh, population n into e raise to mu b by tau plus e raise to minus mu b by uh, tau. Uh, similarly, for the higher state that is n 2 uh, we can have this uh, mi minus uh, e raise to minus mu b by tau and uh, same uh, denominator factor for this particular state. Hence, the n 1 and n 2 are the populations of the lower and the upper uh, levels and total is given as uh, n is equal to n 1 plus n 2 is the total number of the atoms present in that particular uh, state. Now, let us uh, uh, try to uh, project the uh, magnetic moment or else uh, this is can be seen from the this uh, particular uh, diagram as well. So, the fractional population of the two levels of the system in the thermal equilibrium at temperature T uh, is uh, shown over here uh, in uh, uh, magnetic field B. So, the magnetic moment is uh, proportional to the difference between the two cause magnetic moment is proportional to the difference between these two states. So, the fractional population on the y axis and the uh, horizontal axis will be having the mu b by uh, mu uh, into b by or uh, mu into b by k b t. So, this is on the y uh, horizontal axis and we can have the upper state and the, this is the lower state uh, fractional populations. So, 
this is how because uh, as the lower population get increases the, this will go on decreasing but uh, as upper population gets increases obviously the lower population just decreases this is what it can get uh, get the information from it and the temperature as you can uh, one by t so it's the temperature is decreasing increasing obviously will go come lower and lower so there will be the uh, half half equal uh, distribution at the temperature becomes uh, infinite at this point now let's see the projection of the magnetic moment of the upper state along the field direction so upper state along the field direction is uh, minus mu uh, and uh, of the lower state and that of the lower state is a plus mu so the resultant magnetization for n atoms per unit volume is n atoms per unit volume is given as x is it as defined parameter here x is equal to mu into b this is the uh, magnetic moment uh, not the bohr magnetron don't get, don't get confused this mu b so mu is a magnetic moment into the applied magnetic field b this is the uh, boltzmann constant t is the temperature so x is equal to mu b by uh, k b t so uh, total magne uh, magnetization m is equal to um, number I means difference will give us the how much number of the atoms are uh, available okay uh, are excessive um, atoms into the mu so uh, this n into mu and the uh, whatever the n1 minus n2 from this equation from these equations we can write down the e raised to x minus e raised to minus x divided by e raised to x plus e raised to minus x this is i think what the this is formula for the tan hyperbolic of x so n times mu into tan hyperbolic of x but if we just consider the x is very very uh, less for the higher temperature we can consider here so the tan hyperbolic of x becomes a x we can uh, define for the x is very very greater than um, less than 1 then e raised to x will be the 1 plus x and uh, e raised to minus x becomes uh, uh, 1 minus x so this will give us the uh, 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 condition that tan hyperbolic of x uh, becomes a x so um, magnetization is defined or defined aphorismal defined as n times mu into mu b by uh, k b t in a magnetic field an atom with the angular momentum j has a 2j plus 1 uh, equally spaced energy levels 2j plus 1 equally spaced energy uh, levels so uh, m is equal to so m is equal to n times g into j mu b into b j of x where x is defined as here uh, g times j mu b b by k b t where uh, the Brillouin uh, function b j is defined as the okay, uh, function is defined here uh, as, sorry uh, so before we go for this uh, uh, no, whole equation so in the uh, magnetic field atom with the angular momentum j has a 2j plus 1 equally spaced uh, uh, energy levels and we can see uh, from this uh, diagram as well so this is uh, the diagram where uh, it is uh, shown that the plot of the magnetic moment curves versus b by t okay b by uh, uh, t uh, for the spherical uh, samples of uh, potassium uh, chromium okay so the potassium uh, chromium and then the the ferric ammonium ferric ammonium and the uh, gadolinium uh, sulfate uh, octahydrate okay and they, uh, these are the 99.5 percent magnetic saturation is achieved at the uh, temperature of the 1.3 kelvin and above the 50000 gauss 50000 gauss so this is a kilo gauss per degree it is given and this is for the s is equal to 3 by 2 s is equal to 5 by 2 and s is equal to 7 but so this is total spin or uh, total resultant spin is given for that particular case so cr3 plus fe3 plus and gd3 uh, plus now here in this equation we have seen that we had Brillouin on function bj is defined as uh, bj of x is equal to 2j plus 1 upon 2j uh, cotangent hyperbolic of 2j plus 1 x divided by 2j minus 1 by 2j uh, cotangent hyperbolic of x by uh, 2j now uh, for the x is very very less than 1 uh, cotangent hyperbolic of x is uh, equal to 1 by x plus x by 3 minus x cube by 45 plus uh, so and so forth this is but for the uh, x is very very less than 1 we can uh, neglect the higher terms in the 
uh, expansion and the susceptibility is given by m by b is different because this is magnetization uh, per unit applied magnetic field gives us the susceptibility this is defined as to be the chi and this is nothing but the n j into j plus 1 g square mu b square divided by j uh, 3 k b t not j is equal to n p square mu b square by uh, 3 k b t is defined to be the c and uh, what is the p over here the another variable that is nothing but the g into uh, j plus j into j plus 1 raised to uh, half that is effective number of the Bohr magnetons is defined here and uh, what we call it as uh, uh, effective number of the Bohr magnetons is the p. So, it, uh, chi is proportional to the p square here and this uh, all are constant one except the temperature one except the temperature one. So, this is defined as a c. So, c is a constant called as a Curie constant and c is equal to the whatever the remaining term. So, this is value of the c here and, and this is called as a Curie constant uh, and is also known as the Curie Brill one law. Oh, okay. So, this is known as the Curie Brill one uh, law and uh, it is uh, very well known as a, a Curie law. Okay. This is very well known as a Curie law and results for the paramagnetic uh, ions in the gadolinium salt uh, is uh, something uh, it is uh, like a straight line behavior we can get it uh, 1 over chi versus uh, the, uh, temperature. Okay. Thank you.